In its video, MBC TV portrayed the descent of the Holy Eucharist during Bishop Paul Kim's visit to the chapel in Naju on June 12, 1997 as a fake. The scenes of Bishop Kim's visit and the miracle he witnessed were recorded by a video camera installed inside the chapel. This camera is turned on at every important occasion, such as an overnight prayer meeting, a bishop's visit, and so on. Of course, nobody can anticipate or predict the occurrence of miracles. During Bishop Paul Kim's visit, Julia wiped sweat from her forehead with a white handkerchief and then put it back in her pocket. NBC TV played this footage in reverse to make Julia look like she was taking out the white handkerchief from her pocket just before the Eucharist came down to the altar before the Blessed Mother statue. What NBC TV did was a deceptive act of altering someone else's video footage to damage others' reputation. NBC TV also interviewed a self-appointed witness, Tina Kim, who was a driver for Father Anthony Kim, who came with the bishop. Tina Kim testified before several priests of the Gwangju Archdiocese that she saw Julia taking a host out of her pocket and throwing it to the altar before the Blessed Mother statue to fake a miraculous descent of the Eucharist. Later, she reversed her words several times, saying that she was not sure of what really happened. Tina Kim also testified that there were only three people in the chapel, Bishop Paul Kim, Father Anthony Kim, and herself when the reported miracle occurred. But there actually were more than 10 people in the chapel at that time. There also were other, more credible witnesses who heard Archbishop Victorinus Yoon, the ordinary of Gwangju at that time, say that he did not believe Tina Kim's testimony because if Julia had hurriedly taken a large host out of her pocket and thrown it forcefully, it would surely have been damaged but the host in question did not even have any damage at all. Also, Victorina O, oh, a volunteer helper in Naju who helped Julia get dressed before going out to the chapel to greet the bishop, testified that there was nothing in Julia's pocket that day except a white handkerchief. The Lord and the Blessed Mother who came to Naju have given us numerous miraculous signs to confirm the authenticity of the messages. These signs are perfect gifts and precious and marvelous signs from God. Among them, some of the most significant ones are the miraculous change of the Eucharistic species into visible flesh and blood during the Mass celebrated by His Holiness Pope John Paul II, the miraculous descents of the Eucharist during the visit of the Apostolic Pronuncio Archbishop Giovanni Bulaitis, the Eucharistic miracle during Bishop Roman Danilak's visit, the Eucharistic miracle in Shivu, Malaysia, witnessed by Bishop Dominic Su, and the miraculous descent of the Eucharist during Bishop Paul Kim's visit to Naju. So far, the Eucharist miraculously came down in Naju 13 times. The Eucharistic species of bread and wine turned into visible flesh and blood 12 times, and the sacred host bled 3 times. On November 24, 1994, while the Apostolic Pronuncia was praying in the chapel together with several priests and about 70 lay people, St. Michael the Archangel brought a large sacred host and a few minutes later, a small sacred host came down and wrapped in light. The Apostolic Pronuncia, Archbishop Lightis, believed in these miracles and sent detailed reports to the Holy See. In May 2001, Ms. Judy Navarrete, a resident of Los Angeles, California, and a group of several pilgrims went to Italy and saw a display of the photographs of the Eucharistic miracle through Julia in the Vatican displayed in Our Lady of Grace Church above the Cape of St. Michael the Archangel near San Giovanni Rotondo, St. Padre Pio's shrine. These photographs and the explanation in Italian were displayed along with other church-approved Eucharistic miracles such as those in Lanciano and Orvieto. The Italian travel guide explained that the miracle through Julia involved the Holy Father, and therefore this exhibit must have required the permission of the Holy See. While still in Italy, 
Judy and her companions were surprised again when they saw on Italian Catholic TV a report on the miracles in Naju, Korea. It included the Eucharistic miracle in the Vatican witnessed by Pope John Paul II and other miracles in Naju. The pilgrimage guide repeated that such a broadcast would not have been possible without the Holy See's permission because it involved the Holy Father as a witness of the miracle. Si intravede chiaramente l'ostia che scende dalla parte sinistra della volta della cappella, attraversa la navata, oltrepassa la statuetta della Madonna e infine si dirige in senso contrario verso i fedeli raccolti in preghiera. The following is a translation of the Italian text displayed in Our Lady of Grace Church explaining the Eucharistic miracle in the Vatican. The Lord manifested this marvelous Eucharistic miracle before the eyes of John Paul II, or rather, he was one of the main participants of the supernatural phenomenon. On October 31, 1995, the pontiff celebrated Holy Mass at 7.30 a.m. in his private chapel. Those present by invitation were some pilgrims, among whom were Monsignor Dionisio Peck, secretary of the Bishop's Conference of South Korea, the seminarian Raphael Song, and Julia Yoon, her husband and daughter, all of South Korea. This Julia is the mystic of Naju, where in a chapel she receives messages from the Virgin Mary, in which the pontiff has shown interest. Also present was Monsignor Vincent Tu, Vietnamese, private secretary of the Holy Father. During communion, Julia received the host from the hands of the pontiff, and did not succeed in swallowing it, for it began to swell and to taste of blood. Then she opened her mouth to Monsignor Beck, who noted that the host was converted into live flesh and blood. John Paul II was not at all startled, but marveled and observed the phenomenon and then lovingly blessed the mystic. The Eucharistic phenomenon, although echoed among those present, was kept secret for around two years, so as to avoid any sensationalistic clamors. <laughs>